recording. We're, we today, we are going to wrap up our uh, study of what the preacher does. Uh, we're going to have some conversation and then hopefully we'll see what we've all learned. What we've spoken about so far is uh, the place of preachers. The preacher has two types of responsibilities. Those are both inward and outward facing. Uh, inward facing, he, the preacher has to spend time reading and studying. Uh, meditate on these things, which means to he has to spend time studying. Having faith and a good conscience. He must demonstrate the faith that is required of all believers, but he should set an example. Follow after righteousness. Flee greediness, but seek faith, love, patience, gentleness. Keep yourself pure. Flee youthful lust. Test all things and hold fast to what is good true abstain from evil let's talk about that anna unmute please there you go yes sir. Um, as a christian in specific uh in general and a preacher in specific uh, we should avoid all things that are evil and that'll be okay, right? Mm, yes, sir. Okay. Well, we're not going to go through the class again. Uh, we not only must avoid the things that are evil, we must also avoid what? The appearance of evil. We I understand we talked about uh, barstool evangelism. Well, you can't go to the karaoke bar and do evangelism because it doesn't look like that's what you're there doing, correct? The minister must not only avoid doing what is wrong, but has to avoid appearing to do wrong. We have to guard that that has been committed to us. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. We have to guard and protect the word of God. We have to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold to our eternal life and encourage the members to do likewise. Uh, the problem areas that preachers run into, money. Money is a problem. You have to live within your beats. Uh, Marital fidelity, you have to be faithful to your wife. Uh, you have to flee youthful lust and you have to, uh, there have been too many, there's an old saying, and this is non-scriptural, but it comes from, it has a scriptural basis. If you want to, dis, if you want to build a ministry, if you want people to follow you and learn how to seek God, you have to do two things. You have to keep your money off of the, you have to keep your hands off of the money and you have to keep your hands off of the girls. Okay. The two things you have to do, keep your hands off the money, keep your hands off the girls. Anything else we can rebuild, but if you get involved in those two, you can destroy your ministry. We have to embrace, we have to encourage others to embrace. We have to teach the authority of God's arrangement. Now, the minister, the preacher, spends most of the time in front of the congregation and usually has more training has spent has more training and has spent more time studying God's word than others. It becomes easy for a minister to think of themselves as being a spiritual authority. And people tend to look to the minister for answers on what to do. 
How should we do things? What is right? What is wrong? The minister is to openly state what is correct, what scripture says. However, he has to keep in mind that he is under the oversight of the elders. And in a situation when there are no elders, he's not supposed to take over and have a one-man rule over the church. It should always be the desire. and It should always be an effort by the preacher to help the church to become scripturally organized, working as God has decreed. A minister must always consider themselves a servant, just like every other member of the body of Christ. Give me Romans chapter 1, verse 1, please, Anna. Sir, is it Romans chapter 1, verse 1? Correct. Wait, is everybody there? Yes. Okay. Romans chapter 1, verse 1 says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. So Paul, who was an apostle, appointed by who? God. He must serve God first. Well, if that's the case with Paul, then it's also the case with you and I. A minister is never to become like Diotrephes. Third John, verse nine. Third John, verse nine. Wilma. And by the way, his name is Diotrephes. Okay. Uh, Third John, verse nine. I have written something to the church, but the other piece who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. Wow. What does that sound like to you, Wilma? Um, uh, that the Otrepis uh, does not acknowledge the authority of the church. Uh, the Apostle John, right? Go ahead and give me verse 10 to go with that, please. Uh, Vanessa? So, 3 John verse 10 says, So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us, and not to content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers, and also stop those who wants to put them out of the church. Wow. If I come. If I come, I will bring then, up what he said. Yeah. Saying. John made a clear statement. The apostle made this definitive. I hope shortly to see thee face to face. I will bring to his remembrance. Uh, John is going to bring to the remembrance of Diotrephes the things he has done. And he wants to bring the remembrance not just to Diotrephes, but to the whole congregation, exposing the content, the conduct that he might receive censure. Now, Is it possible?
prefer a preacher to try to seek preeminence within the group? Everybody say yes real quick. Yes, it is. Okay, now here's the question. Is it possible for someone who is not the preacher, maybe an elder, maybe a deacon, maybe just a regular member, to attempt to seek preeminence within the group? It's possible. It's possible. We, Cora and I, we've seen it happen, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not supposed to seek preeminence or rule. We are to be an example to other believers in our words, in our conduct, in our love for others, in the kind of spirit that we manifest in both faith and purity. First Timothy chapter four, verse 12. First Timothy chapter four, verse 12. Viva. Are you guys there? Web seventy one ate. Okay. First Timothy chapter four, verse twelve. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. So one of the things I want to point out about Timothy here is he was apparently a young man. Now, it says, do not, let no man despise your youth. Uh, this might be paraphrased as saying, assert the dignity of your office. Even though men may think of you as being young, let no one push you aside as a boy. Uh, youth is a relative term. It depends on what the rules are and what the context is. 40 years old might be old to be a private in the army. Rollick's not here to verify this for us, but if he was, we would let him tell, tell us. 40 years old might be old to be a private in the army, but it would be really young to be a president of the country, right? Yeah. So what is the context? What is the context of let no one despise your youth? Let no one push aside, assert the dignity of your office. Set an example in word, in life, in love. The conduct of any minister is to be regulated by the word of God, the life he lives, and love for our brethren. We must be the one whose life measures up to the ideals that we preach. We have to set the example. We want other people to follow. Trust me when I say this. Leadership, preaching, is no bed of roses. It's no, it has its challenges. It certainly has its good times. And it has rewards almost on a daily basis. But at times, it may require a fierce spiritual battle with the ruler of this life, this world. A minister, his life must never be unprotected by the armor of God. Give me Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Chrissy? Yeah. 
questions. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the things of the Okay. Marvin, verse 12, please. And verse 12, it says here, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, right? What do we wrestle against? Marvin? Sir, what does it mean, uh, wrestle? To combat. We are not fighting against uh, spirit. We're not fighting against physical forces, are we? Flesh and blood. Yeah. No, sir. Flesh and blood. What are we wrestling against? No, sir. What are we struggling? Uh, spiritual. Spiritual forces, right? Spiritual. Are there spiritual forces for good? Mm -hmm. Dark world. Mm. Are there spiritual forces that are for good? And the answer is yes. However, are there also spiritual forces that are for evil, that are for this world? Yeah. Julie, verse 13, please. Verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand firm. Uh, it says in the evil day, and there are some people here who have the perception that he's that Paul is referring some future date. Uh, that's not the case. There is always a challenge as we read through the new testament in fact the book of jude is written specifically to address those who have false teaching those who are of this world uh verse 14 i read Fourteen says stand before having Fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, and verse 15, please. Cora? Verse 15 says, And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And 16, Alan? Uh, verse 16 says, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which take up with, uh, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. 17, Seth. And verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And Anna, verse 18, please. Hello? Yeah. Oh. Verse 17, and take yes. the helmet of salvation. Yeah, you got 17. I need Anna to do 18. Oh, I didn't hear that. And verse 18 says, Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Okay, now here's a question for you. We notice we have on the full armor of God, right? Is all of your body covered? 
Mm-hmm. Read, go back over, read the armor and tell me, is everything on your body covered? Your head is covered with what? The helmet. Mm-hmm. Your shield. Have your feet shod. Put on the shoes, the righteousness, right? What's Irene? So what is not covered? Irene, you're muted. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, the body, sir. You have on the shield, right? And the full armor. Uh, yes, sir. But the feet, uh, I think feet. We have the feet. What's uncovered? Can anybody uh, come up with one? Arm, Alan? arm, and feet. No. Our faith. Our spirit. Nothing. The back. Nothing because, oh, oh yeah. The back. As long as we're facing Satan, as long as we are challenging him, we have our shield and our helmet and our armor and our shins covered and our mm-hmm. feet are covered. As long as we're facing, we have the sword of the spirit, right? But if you turn mm-hmm. around and go the other direction, it's not covered. It's not covered. So, hindi pwede to cut. You have to face up to the challenges that are in front of you. And that's not just for any one person, that's for everybody. everybody. So, let's see if we can get some discussion started. Let's see if we can get some opinion. In your opinion, how important is the life of the minister to his ministry? And we will start with to his ministry or to how effective he is in his ministry. Wilma. Uh, So the ministry must be very effective by uh, the teachings uh, so that everybody will understand. Um, He must also be effective in showing good works and good good works to everybody so that uh, uh, the whole ministry will be uh, following the good works he is showing. Okay. Now, let me rephrase that question. I'll see if I can get the answer I'm looking for. Okay. If a, if a minister or preacher is going to be effective in their ministry, how important is it that they live their ministry if the ministry is going to be effective? What do I mean by that? Well, I used this example the other day, but if a preacher preaches good on Sunday, right? But reputation, cha. Lasinga, lasingo, uh, chaka chesmoso, chaka he doesn't get along with people. Swapangsha. How effective is the ministry going to be? Nalin? It won't be effective, sir. Why? Uh, because uh, the congregation, I mean, the members, sir, will uh, look up. Uh, if you're chismoso, swapang, maybe I will transfer to another church. Okay. (laughs) Vanessa. Sir, maybe what we will see to the 
the elders must meet to the ministry will be will follow we will follow something like that we will follow the example right yes sir okay mila Uh, the effectiveness of the preacher to his ministry, sir, is by uh, setting an example, showing uh, good things, and uh, avoid uh, unjust things like uh, going to the bar. Okay. Chrissy. Preacher must be set a good example. A good preacher must be a good example to their believers in every way. So that okay. You okay, Marvin. Um, if if a minister is a um doesn't set an example definitely i wouldn't uh trust him because if he do not preach uh he do not do what he preach then definitely no one will trust and believe in him okay julie well ministry sir should be able to te teach good things for the congregation because if many ministries have a like just masa or just are have a evil things doing the members should uh will think uh will say bad things to the ministry okay irene uh, yes it is effective because if the minister has a good example to uh, us, um, they, they also believe, and it is very exam very good example for the others. So that's why um, you need to be a good leader. Okay. Cora. I think it's basically you have to follow the word of God to set a good example. Okay. Following the scriptures. How well can you build an effective ministry even if you aren't following God? Of course not. Okay. What are you trying? What are you trying to follow if you, if uh, what are you trying to prove in that ministry if you're not you don't have a something to follow and that is. And that is supposed to be the word of God, supposed to be the Bible. Okay. Alan. Uh, a minister sh should be effective in his ministry if, uh, as what they say, that he will live by an example. So live what he preach. Okay. Seth. They must involve in activities that serve the brotherhood in general and not just the local church. That serves to expand their view of the kingdom. Okay. Very good. Anna. Uh, for me, sir, uh, the preacher or the minister must be a good uh, role model to the member because the members will follow what the minister did. Okay. Is Bible knowledge important to building an effective ministry? Lynn? Yes. Yes, sir. Why? Uh, because you're going to teach us. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Vanessa. Sir, show your, your respect in all 
in all aspects to a model for good works in in your teaching, showing dignity and integrity. Okay. Mila. Sir, can you repeat the question, sir? How important is it for a minister to have good Bible knowledge in order to be effective? It is very important that the preacher has a enough knowledge uh, about the Bible because he or she, he will able to deliver the message of the God uh, to, to his members. So each member will be able to understand what God wants us to do. Okay. Chrissy. Teacher must have uh, knowledge about the Bible. It's important because uh, it's the way preacher uh, teach a member a good things from the Bible. Marvin, I believe that a preacher or a minister must have a profound knowledge when it comes to Bible so that the listener or the um, ministry would be extraordinary. So that's why a minister should put extra in every way he can. Okay. Julie. Yes, sir. Um, preacher should be had have able knowledge to teach everyone because, but based on the scriptures, it's written that uh, all of us uh, we are able to teaching and reproofing for ec and equip for every good work. Very good. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Very good, Julie. Irene. I believe, sir. Uh, that that is, that is important because you need to know what the Bible say. I, uh, what is the word of God according to the Bible? And the minister is need to more knowledge. So that's why uh, the the members also you need to uh, hear about the minister says according to the Bible and the. Uh, Word of God. Okay. Uh, Cora. So, um, it is very important. Actually, it's the most important. What are you going to teach if you don't know the Bible? Okay. What are you, you're going to just set. What are you doing? Just setting some stories. You're going to tell cool you, stories. Yeah, telling co cool stories out of the blues instead of instead of using the Bible as your examples. Okay. You need, to be very, you need to be very knowledgeable. Um, yes, it is very important for to a minister to have to have a deeper knowledge about the in the Bible. Okay, Seth. A minister in post prayer services, preacher to people in church, lead worship services, and mix with those taking personal or spiritual direction. Okay. Anna. It's very important, sir, that the preacher or the minister will have knowledge regarding Bible because, for example, sir, here in our congregation, your teaching is based on sola scriptura or scriptures of me. Okay. Wilma. Uh, yes, sir, it is important because what he is going to teach is according to the scripture of God. Well, I'm going to surprise everybody, okay? Because the question I asked was, how important 
is Bible knowledge for a minister to develop a successful ministry. Please pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say. How do you define success? Do you define success the way the world does by worldly income? Do you define success by how big the church is? Do you define success by how many followers he has? Do you define, how do you define success? Because it is absolutely not necessary to have good Bible knowledge if you define success the way the world does. How many followers? How big is the church? How much money do you make? How nice are your clothes? If that's how you define success, Bible knowledge is not important. Entertainment value is important. If, however, you define success as equipping the saints to go to heaven, teaching them God's word, then Bible knowledge is incredibly important. How do you define success? And in case you're interested, I define success on each and every person being not only prepared to go to heaven, but being prepared to fulfill Matthew 28, 18 through 20. If you don't know, somebody read that for me. Matt, I don't care who does it. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them Stop. to obey Stop. everything. Doing what? Teaching them. To obey everything. If you don't know, what can you teach? The rule here is not how much do I know. The judgment for success of a ministry, in my view, is not how much I know. It's how much you know. It's how much the members know. That's success because scripture does not say preacher go. It does not say earnest go. It does not say put a name in there go. It says you go. And you teach, Chrissy, you teach, Julie, you teach, Marvin, you teach, Seth. But if I haven't taught you, I haven't trained you, how or can you fulfill the command that Jesus Christ gave you? And the answer is... You can't. I might have a church of 200 or 2,000. But if my members can't open their Bible and find 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, of what use is my ministry? Judged by the world standards, I might have a high income. I might have a big church. But is the ministry effective? And the answer is, in my opinion, no. So the definition of a successful ministry depends on how the minister how do we necessarily define the success? Correct. It's not, uh, you know, a lot of different ministers, especially nowadays, that you can see on the television, they think that 
having a lot of people in their television watching it and responding to the television is a successful ministry. Yes. Society defines them as successful. But are they equipping the saints? So you said the society defined it, but I think... God defines think, it differently. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm going to say. It, it's not it's not us or it's not anybody else or even the preachers should define it, but I think God should define it. And God will say, I tell you that this ministry is successful or not. Correct. Study to show thyself approved, a workman who needeth not be ashamed. Right? Yes. So if God says study to show yourself approved, a workman who need not be ashamed, he's not telling you how many people are in your church. He's telling you, you need to not be ashamed of the work that you're doing. So when I, by the way, sidebar, stop being preacher for a minute, Ernest. When I see people who know the plan of salvation by heart, when I see people who know, understand scripture, and I know that I'm the one who God used to teach them, is that a successful ministry? Absolutely. All right, let's stop the recording.